Lab 6.2, creating a homogeneous part. The lab objectives are, after you complete this lab, we'll be able to open the new part properties window, create a part graphics, add pins and power pins, modify pin properties, assign pin numbers to all gates in the package, set up pin swapping for Allegro and layout, add user properties, control property display, add part aliases. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in the project manager window and click on the training.llgb file and we're going to click design new part note you can also add a new part using uh, the new part command in the right mouse pop-up button complete the form here so I have a little form that shows what we need to do uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in 74 ls zero, 0 this guy's going to say dip 14 I want parts per package, I want 4 parts homogenous, alphabetic I'm going to go ahead and click OK when we finish the training TRNG library window looks like they, uh, will look like this there we go Go back here. See, we have this now. I have a SIN4LS00 and library cache outputs and reference projects. So, here next, we're creating part graphics. As uh, you saw in the last video, uh, once I created the new parts property and I hit OK, uh, this tab uh, came up the trng.olb tab. This has uh, the parts editor. So the part editor automatically displays a part boundary box, which you see here in front of you. It's right here. Uh, this box has five grid space squares. All part graphics must fit within the dotted boundary. One, maximize the part editor window to select view and zoom all. Two, we're going to place the arc icon in the toolbox. Bear with me here. Alright, so you're going to do this. You're going to click here in the middle, and I'm going to click my second click. Once I click on the arc, sorry about that. Click here in the middle, then I'm going to click down here, and then I'm going to click here to end my arc. Once I do that, I'm going to hit escape, escape. There you go. That will take us out of that. I'll select poly, place polyline. I'm going to place polyline icon. It's over here. Let's see if I can find this guy. Place polyline. There we go. Polyline is going to allow me to. Uh, start from here and then bring it on over to here. There we go. I'll hit escape again twice. Uh, Actually, if I do this again, I hit right click and I hit select end mode. Let's see if I can find that guy. All right. 
Actually, there, that's another method of doing that, so um, we're going to worry about that. So I also notice that the bounding box is too large. Uh, you must touch the edges of the part of graphics. Uh, this ensures that when you attach the pins to the part bo bounding box, they contact the polygon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the box, and then I'm going to make it smaller. So now I'm going to hit escape, I'm going to go ahead and file save. Uh, there we go. What we want to do here is add power pins. Uh, so we're going to click the place pin icon. Clicked on the guy. So I have a place pin now. I'm going to put in uh, G and D for ground. We'll leave that short and make this a power type. Uh, and we're also going to make this number 7. We have scalar. We want this pin to be visible. Uh, we're going to. So actually, we're going to make sure that it's not visible. Uncheck it. Generally, you don't want power pins visible when the part is placed in the design. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click OK. We'll place a ground pin on the bottom of the graphic. There we go. Remain in pin placement mode and place another pin on top of the graphic. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit escape twice. Uh, I see that this guy is in the way, so I'm going to move him just a little bit. Escape. There we go. How about that? Oops. That's done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the power pin I just placed on top. I'm going to change the name to VCC. I'm going to change the number to 14. I'm going to hit OK and then Escape twice. And file Save. Now what I want to do is I want to assign pin numbers to all my package gates. So uh, for this homogeneous or homogeneous part, excuse me, uh, with four parts per package, the part graphic represents one of four identical sections. So what I want to do is I'm going to select view package. And then what I have here is I have one package, two packages, three packages, four packages. As you can see I have one, two, and three set aside there. So the next thing I'm going to want to do is probably set up numbers for the rest of my pins other than power and ground since those are universal. So I'm going to go ahead and select Edit Properties or Control E. Package Properties spreadsheet's going to open, which you see here. Uh, we're going to. We also notice. We also notice that uh, we have sections B, C, and D, which I also mentioned just a minute ago. They need pin numbers. So what I'm going to do is do the following. These are going to be right here, right here. I'm going to add numbers per what we see for these, right? So I'll click back over here. This is going to be 10. This is going to be 9. This is going to be 8. Seven. This is going to be 14 because it's a uh,
power. Uh, the other ones uh, are going to be 13, 12, 11, 7, 14. It's going to be 15. Alright. So I'm actually going to go ahead and re redo these. This one actually is going to be 4, 5, 6, 7, 14. And this is going to be uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 14. Then I'm going to have uh, 13, 12, 11, 7, 14. Go ahead and hit OK. So now what we want to do is we're setting up pin swapping for the Allegro layout. So in order to perform pin swapping uh, in Allegro or CAD layout tools, we're going to have to uh, hit the pin swap properties in the capture library. In order to do this, we, were gonna, we can select edit. Once we're in the library, we're going to select edit. And then we'll hit uh, properties. Uh, from the pull down menu, reopen the package property spreadsheet. Locate the pin group column. So actually I'm going to do this one more time. Give me a Alright, so I'm going to try this again here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit edit here. Hit properties. Now I have my package properties. This is what I wanted. Uh, so I want to locate the pin group column. That's this guy here. Uh, for the inputs, INA and INB assign number one. So what I'll do is inputs A and inputs B, and I'll assign one, 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 one. one. One, 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 one. All right. So now for uh, for output, I'll assign zero. There we go. Go ahead. Once I do this, I'll leave the pin group field empty for pins ground and DCC. I'll click OK and then save file. There we go. So the next thing we want to do is add user properties. Uh, we'll be doing this by clicking on view, part, Zoomed in too much here. <laughs> there we are. I'll do the uh, zoom all. There we go. So, uh, what I'll do is hit Control N to toggle through the four sections of the package. As you can see, I'm changing them out. Uh, notice that each of the section displays the pin numbers you assigned. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Options and Part Properties. I'm going to click on the New button. 
a new property box uh, dialog box appears. What I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the new property name and value uh, that's specified here. So you'll see that in just a second. There we go. Go ahead and hit OK. Make sure the part number property is highlighted on the display, which I see that here uh, on the right. So the display properties dialog box appears. And the display format section select value only. So what this does is shows me the property value but not the property name. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So now I have that on my screen here. Uh, I'm going to click OK for the users and the users property box which you just saw me do. Uh, the property value is visible. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select options and part properties again. user properties dialog, spot, dialog box appears. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the pin names visible option. There we go. Click, uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to toggle him off to false. There we go. So just to let you guys know, is required property for Allegro for all parts is a property called class. Each part must then have a class property value of either IO, IC for standards parts like memory, etc., or discrete for all discrete parts such as resistors, capacitors. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit File, Save. So just note also that uh, visibility of pin names and pin and numbers is controlled with the true-false property value rather than with the display button in the user properties form. Alright, so what we're going to be doing here is uh, adding part aliases, right? So just to let you guys know that in part aliases, uh, this really this method for part aliases or doing part aliases, aliasing, excuse me, should not be used if each part is unique. An example of this is different part numbers for each part. I'm going to try to go through this just for the sake of showing. So, what we're going to do is we're going to select package properties. I can do that. So actually, I'm going to just go ahead and do options, package properties. A lot easier that way. I'm going to click on part aliases. And what I'm going to do is, I'm in the new part aliases dialog box, you see here for alias names, uh, I'm going to add in uh, 74LS00. So select the U. Uh, uh, type in 
that guy right there. And we'll do the same thing again, uh, repeating the step but adding 5400. Click OK. We'll click OK to this guy. And I'm going to do is I'm going to click File Save. And then File Close. If you go over here, you'll see that I have 5400, 7400, 74 LS 100. This concludes. Lab 6.2. Thank you.